I need to get it right out of the way that I am not the biggest fan of the original Salem's Lot. The story is interesting, but I find it to be a three hour slog with about 15 minutes of cool moments. So I was ecstatic to see it finally get the remake treatment. Or rather, I was glad to see the book adapted another time to try and get it right finally. They tried again in 2004 and it just never really worked. Which is too bad because the story is so simple that it should be a home run. And given that it's Stephen King's favorite story of his own, there are clearly some prominent fans. Yet this film has stood on the shelf waiting for release, and perhaps signaling that all is not well with Salem's Lot 2024. I'm here for research. What exactly though are you researching? For those who have never read the book or seen either prior adaptation, Salem's Lot follows Ben Mears as he returns to his hometown. Hoping to find inspiration for his next book, he finds that his arrival coincides with that of a dark force descending upon the town, an ancient vampire intent on taking over Jerusalem's lot. As more and more townsfolk are converted, it becomes a ticking time bomb. But Ben's isn't the only story that we follow, as we get an it-like plotline with Jordan Preston Carter's Mark Petrie. Mark has a wisdom beyond his years quality to him, even if he may be a little too in control of situations for his age. After a stellar performance earlier this year in skincare, Pullman continues to be great in whatever he does. His romance with Mackenzie Lee's Susan hits the right level of smitten. Then I was very excited to see Bill Camp get such a featured role, as he's always been so underrated. The other acting is a little stiff throughout, with some stilted performances amongst some people having fun with it. Young Nicholas Crovetti seems to relish in getting to play a bad guy, and it was entertaining. King regular William Sadler appears as a police officer, but it's a pretty unrewarding role. Alfre Woodard feels more like she's checking off a box versus actually contributing to the narrative. Some of the scares have potential with some really cool build-up moments, but nearly every single one ends on a lame jump scare. And it's one of those jump scares where the scene just immediately ends, which means there's no satisfying payoff to any of these tense moments. It sucks because I really enjoy the simplicity of the story, and the CGI can be a bit distracting, with enhancements on nearly all of the horror elements. Then there's Kurt Barlow, the head vampire, whose appearance looks like a Halloween mask of the classic Nosferatu-like being. He's often overlit and highlighting the very rubbery-looking mask. And while there's potential with the romance between Susan and Ben, it ultimately falls flat in the end. As soon as it starts to blossom, the film switches gears and becomes it. Every character feels shortchanged, and there's not a good balance in the shuffling of all the storylines. There's just not enough time to dig into any dramatic elements, proving that maybe a miniseries really is the only way to tackle the material. The changes don't necessarily ruin the film, the drive-in movie theater bit was great, but the execution feels sloppy and uninspired. Ultimately, I was really disappointed with Salem's Lot. There's clearly a reason that this movie was shelved for years. I was really hoping they'd finally be able to crack the code when it comes to adapting this novel. But sadly, it still hasn't happened, and at this point, I'm afraid it never will. Apparently, a simple story about a vampire taking over a small town is just too much for a feature film. Guess we'll try again in another 20 years. Which is why I'm giving Salem's Lot a 5 out of 10.